So welcome to another episode of Sensible Second Hand Reviews. The show where we film things in an inexpensive manner because we don't have to spend a lot of money to talk to you about wonderful cars that only cost between one and five thousand pounds. This is a 2008 Fiat Panda 100 horsepower. It's owned by Jake from the Wells Wheels YouTube channel. I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. I do apologise for the lighting um, not being wonderful. If the camera starts shaking a bit as well, which it then just did, um, that's because the suspension is very, very firm. So, uh, yes, I'm sorry about that. The um, second generation Fiat Panda was in production from 2003 to 2011, although they uh, extended the production for certain markets until 2012 alongside the third generation one. Actually the second and third generation Pandas are very similar cars, they share the underpinnings with the Fiat 500, which uh, again is... Um, you know, a very much beloved car of so many people. I personally prefer this more practical body shape. It's got, you know, five doors and less retro sort of styling. The engine's available in a uh, second generation Panda, where 1.1 with 54 horsepower, a 1.2 with 60 horsepower, and then this pretty crazy 1.4 with 100 horsepower you may think 100 horsepower really you know that doesn't sound like an awful lot and in some ways it isn't but because this car doesn't weigh anything it, <laughs> it does go quite fast 0 to 60 in this car is something like 9.5 seconds top speed is 115 miles per hour and the average fuel economy when this car was tested under the NEDC driving cycle was somewhere in a region of 45 miles per gallon. Now in comparison to the 1.1 and 1.2 pandas that's not wonderful but for something that actually feels as alive as this does it's it's pretty good. I um, I very much enjoy driving this car and I do apologise if the the phone isn't particularly being very, be very good, it's maybe sort of jumping up and down a bit and um, perhaps you know the mount's not behaving either but I'm having a good time. There was also a 1.3 um, multi-jet uh, diesel but uh, as usual we don't talk about diesels on this channel. Jake's told me that this car as opposed to the city button that you find in more mainstream pandas, this car's actually got a sport button. And that gives you a slightly sharper throttle response. And also that uh, that does give you um, a little bit more weight to the steering. I I'm finding the steering is actually really, really light, with even without the city button that you'd have in uh, more mainstream cars. And so I've just put the sport button on now um, to give me a little bit more urgency and um, you know the, an artificial weight I know it's not real weight because this is an electric steering system but you know it is um, it's enjoyable nevertheless Okay, so uh, we've come back to this uh, random little car park in the middle of a new forest and uh, Mr. Bill is busy preparing to film um, my Sanyong as well, which you'll see on the Wells Wheels channel. Unfortunately, it is a little bit filthy. It, it actually flatters the car slightly, the camera, because we had real trouble finding somewhere to park up this afternoon. Um, the area we're in the New Forest is absolutely rammed full of people, which is fine, it's a nice day, uh, particularly for the time of year, but it did mean that the car's a bit filthy. 
I think this is the best looking first uh, second generation Fiat Panda. Certainly the little spoiler up here and uh, the unique rear bumper with the diffuser look good. That is the standard exhaust by the way. Um, Jake's worked hard at uh, making that badge look really good. That is the name of the car. It's actually even on the, uh, the, the engine and one of the pipes. You can see that. The wheels look very good. You've got rear disc brakes actually because it's a 100 horsepower one. You've got rear disc brakes in it. It's a very nicely proportioned car. I, I, I don't know, but I personally find this a kind of more pleasing car than the 500. I think the 500 is a nice looking car, but it doesn't quite um, sort of sit with me because I know the original um, is even better. Whereas the second generation Panda, I think looks very nice um, in this guise. I'm not sure about the sort of funny roof rails on other versions, but certainly with this type, it looks fantastic. Let's open up the door using this handle that looks like it's off an MG3. Wonder where MG got their inspiration to that. The interior is actually not bad. Just take a take a seat in here. It's quite a nice drum position actually. There's lots and lots and lots of headroom as you'd expect. And instead of the city button, which is on so many of these and also on the 500 and there's a little red panda there too you actually get a sport button which I think is far more my thing it with the you know lesser models in the panda range you can obviously have the um, power steering light and for city use but it's so ridiculously light I don't think you need that at all very very clear dials in this car uh, remind me of a lot of other Fiat's of the period as well. I've actually got Bluetooth and steering wheel controls as well, which for 2008 really isn't too bad for a little car like this. One thing that does surprise me, and I'll just uh, I'll just put the key in, is uh, I'll just pause a minute while I, I disengage the steering lock. Okay, that's a lot better now. The car actually has climate control which I think is amazing amazing you know you, this isn't a luxury car or anything but you get climate control it's a blaupunt to have stereo there's um, an aux input for it and things um, and of course the, uh, the the Bluetooth for the uh, voice calls and things I'm not sure if that's for the stereo or just for um, the voice calls these uh, indicators and wiper stalks don't really feel too bad. And actually, if you close the door, it, plastics are quite hard in here, but that's what you'd expect for a, a car which really was not expensive when it was new at all. Just open that up again. Plenty of room for putting all sorts of odds and ends in there, including the compliant theme that we would need. Jake's put on um, this steering wheel cover. The steering was actually in quite nice condition. He, he did show it to me, and it, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just um, he wants to pr preserve it, and he likes the look of the steering wheel cover. Car's done just under 59,000 miles. You can see we are still in the lockdown, which is why we are keeping distance, and he won't be coming in the car with me. Very, very, very deep glove box. It doesn't look huge, but in comparison to something like a Peugeot 207, that is enormous. Uh, dual front airbags. You could also get side and curtain airbags in a second generation Panda. And here's the unique feature of the 100 horsepower. It has a six speed gearbox. Now, the pattern's a bit interesting. The uh, reverse is over to the right hand side rather than up to the left, which is in so many other cars. They haven't moved the, well, when it switches, they are still in the middle, which is what you'd expect to save a bit of money. But everything feels feels okay. It feels good. A little uh, ashtray thing down here as well, and a Tovot socket, and I think it looks like the um, aux input is somewhere in here. So you've got a slightly modified stereo. Nice conventional handbrake too, and a little cup holder there at the back as well. Excellent. So if we just open up the rear door and mind all that traffic noise. 
I actually see there's a good amount of uh, headroom in here. This is uh, actually Jake's driving position. He's about the same height as me, about five foot eleven or so. If I ignore the fact that the um, headrest is digging into the base of my back, then actually it, it's um, it's all right in here. The headroom's actually fine. Legroom's a bit limited, but it's a small car. At this sort of time, you'd be looking at things like a, you know, uh, um, Volkswagen Fox and, and things like that, which, you know, I'm not sure are quite as spacious as this. There's even a big door pocket in the back. I do like this uh, this fabric. It's quite nice. Don't get a rear armrest or anything, um, but I even like the uh, the seat pattern. It's quite nice. Actually in very nice condition, this car. not surprised that um, Jake paid a bit of an extra premium for it. Because it is lovely. Go around to the back of the boot. This car came out in uh, 2003, which was the time when things like Volkswagen Lupo and Seat Arossa were still on the market. And they definitely had smaller boots than this. This is about 200 litres or so, just over. And if we peel this cover back, so you've got a space over spare wheel in there as well. It's actually a very practical shape. There's nothing too fancy about this. There is a boot light, which is, is handy. But the profile of the car means that actually it's quite easy to see out the back. It's uh, got these little win these windows, so parking is not really a problem. I mean, I suppose you could fit a reversing camera to that or not, but you probably don't need to. Like the spoiler at the top as well. One thing I am quite fond of is these, uh, is these air vents. It's actually a quite a nice design. Right, let's open the bonnet. Here we have the 100 horsepower engine. Jake's um, just been detailing the uh, red lettering in that as well to make it look better. There is no room in here whatsoever to work on anything. Look at where the engine mount is in comparison to the, I believe that's the cam belt cover in there. Changing the cam belt in this, according to Mr. Colm, rubbish mechanic who works on my cars, is a nightmare. The lesser models, 1.1 and 1.2s, aren't like this, but because they're squeezing a 1.4 litre engine with 60 more horsepower than the 1.2 into here, there is just no room. Um, I believe the slave cylinder for the clutch is underneath the battery and things like that. Uh, another pogo um, part. This does have a, an induction kit on it, so a bit more noise perhaps, a bit more satisfying uh, engine sound, but apparently no more horsepower, which is a bit of a shame. I do like these uh, very clear fog lights and lights though. I think Jake's been putting a lot of work into making this car look its best. Right, time to go for another drive. Right viewers, I do apologise for the mounts in the way, but that's just the way that things go on this channel I'm afraid. Because of my own filming today, I can't have a camera person in the car, which is what my preference would be. Just be trying out the performance of this 1.4 fire engine. It does have 16 valves and twin overhead cams, and uh, I've just been up to 60 on this de restricted road and that felt fantastic. Absolutely brilliant. Fortunately we've now come to this situation where um, the road is really bad. Just see if we can get through that. Yes, we're okay, we're okay, we're okay. So we're in a 40 zone here. And it's a good road this, it's a lot of fun. So if a mountain as I said, starts jumping up and down and everything like that, then I do apologise. Just the way that it tends to go on this channel, I'm afraid. So there we go, just out of the way there. There we are, back on the road. So there were uh, various trim options available for the second generation Panda. One of them was the base one in this country, which is called the Active. That was often sold with a 1.1 engine. Then there was the Dynamic and the uh, Eleganza. The Eleganza 
had much nicer bits on it. And that's actually a name that dates back to the Fiat Uno of the 1980s. I remember one of the Charmanders I had when I was growing up had a Fiat Uno Eleganza. So the car feels just fantastic on these little forest roads. It um, is a bit firm in terms of the suspension, which is what I was expecting. If you want to see actually a, a tweed jacket reviews type video, then the 2500 subscriber special, which might or might not be up on the channel at the moment, will actually inform you more about the car because this was the car that Jake chose to do a Tweed Jacket Reviews parody um, for my 2500 subscriber special and I'm pleased you did because it gave me lots of useful information. The 100 horsepower Panda was only sold from 2006 to 2010. The reason for that was apparently due to emissions regulations. This engine was only Euro 4 compliant, it's not Euro 5 compliant and by the time that um, 2010 came around they wanted Euro 5 compliant engines and this wasn't so they just didn't bother updating it. Gearbox is nice and slick, uh, particularly on this 60,000 mile example. Prices for these 100 horsepower pandas are um, actually increasing at the moment. They're anywhere from sort of two to three thousand pounds, and this is definitely on the upper end of the spectrum, being a car that's in fantastic condition with low mileage. Obviously, if you just want a, a normal Panda, then that's going to be a lot less. That's going to be maybe five hundred pounds to a thousand pounds in a lot of cases. This platform is actually still in use, some with the Fiat 500 and the uh, Panda Mark III that are both still in production, although they these days have quite different engines. They're trying to sort of persuade people to go with mild hybrid and that sort of thing. Um, but yes, you don't have to pay all that money. It's a sensible second hand reviews after all and you can get something like this for well under £5,000. Rivals to this actually would be something like an MG3, although MG3 has more power than this but it's sort of slower. It is a bit larger though and you can get a pretty good, you know, a newer MG3 for maybe two and a half, three thousand pounds. They sort of started that kind of thing as now. Certainly, the uh, Toyota Yaris T Sport, a little bit off, was uh, on sale with this car for a little while. Um, that's an alternative. As if it be Suzuki Ignis Sport, those are pretty rare by now. But I quite like this. They're, they're reliable cars. You just got to make sure you change the cam belt regularly, which on this car is a bit of a job. But there you go. And um, yeah, they're known for being good. Power engines. It can blow head gaskets sometimes, but it's not as common actually as some people will tell you that it is. Right, let's go and talk about some special editions. Let's now look at some uh, Fiat Panda Mark II special editions. The one that stands out to me is the Alessi edition, which looks a bit like an Alessi kettle. They were uh, available in all kinds of funny colours and stuff like that, and with the sort of disc type wheels on them. I think those look really nice. I'm not sure they were sold over here in huge numbers, but uh, you know, there we go. Also, uh, there's the Sporting. Um, that, I don't think, was a uh, regular model. I think it was a special edition, like the uh, old Cinquecento and Seicento Sporting. I'm sure many of you will watch the Miller Corner channel and be very familiar uh, with the Seicento Sporting. Uh, then there was the Mammy edition. Mammy? It's what you sort of cry when... Uh, you know, you've got a big lorry heading towards you and uh, you're in um, a city rover. Uh, and then the My Life, which is a very interesting name for it. There are also um, Eco models in about 2009. The uh, Eco models had the same 1.1 and 1.2 fire engines. I mean, the fire engines have been around since the mid-80s. It's a very long-lasting engine and, you know, they're only just going out of production now. Uh, so, you know, they're pretty well known and they you know, push the... Uh, eco up to sort of 11 really um you know 55 50, 60 horsepower and that's uh, 55 60 miles per gallon in some ways um 55 60 mi <laughs> 55 60 horsepower too because that was the power output to the 1.1 and 1.2 engines um the mark ii panda did have a few changes made to it in i think it was 2005 2007 and 
2009 and with this particular car this has a red badge on it so it's one of the later ones but I wouldn't say particularly that you could constitute that as one big face but like the Austin Maestro that remained in production for many years and yet I wouldn't say that you can definitely say there was a facelift at some sort of change it's just the old the older models look more dated than the newer ones but you know the overall design of the car is the same same with one of these Mark II Pandas. Apologies for the slightly strange uh, angle view as the uh, sun is not proving the easiest uh, this afternoon. So uh, should you consider the wonderful Panda 100 horsepower? Well, absolutely. It is a rare car for me and thinking that, well, you know, they can't be any good. They're, they're a Fiat. How can they be any good? But they are. They are. And they are uh, reliable cars. you just got to keep on top of the maintenance like so many others. You do have to, you know, treat these cars a bit gently these days because they're going up in price and they will be more valuable in the future. Uh, it's just, you know, the way that, um, the way that uh, you know, these things are going. And this will be a cult car in years to come. So, yes, as long as, you know, you get a good example like this one and you look after it, this should serve you very well for many years to come. Prices aren't that expensive at the moment. So, absolutely. Thanks once again to Jake from Wells Wheels, whose channel will be in the description below for lending me this fantastic car. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it. I can see why he loves it so much. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel after you subscribe to Wells Wheels, of course, uh, to like this video and to uh, leave a comment below. We've got a Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting and a website as well, if, particularly if you want to be a source of car for you, because that's actually my job. Um, then www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk. Thank you.